The session is aimed uh, for our clinical colleagues, uh, neurologists in this instance, uh, who may not uh, be acquainted uh, with uh, the clinical uh, uh, procedures uh, uh, that we are using in uh, uh, detecting uh, dementia, uh, diagnosing dementia. And in particular, uh, we are going to concentrate uh, on uh, taking good uh, uh, history from both our patients and a good collateral information. Uh, what I always refer to knowing our patient. I think that's very crucial for every medic and especially it is very important for those of us uh, who are working with people with memory problems. Uh, and uh, the second part uh, of this uh, workshop is uh, to concentrate on uh, a cognitive uh, screening, uh, cognitive assessment for people with dementia. We're going to address uh, um, how to use uh, brief uh, cognitive uh, tools uh, in routine clinical practice, such as the mini mental state exam by Holstein that we have had uh, in, uh, for a long time and we have been using in our clinical practice for nearly 30, 40 years now. Then the Montreal uh, Cognitive Assessment Tool, the Adam Brooks Cognitive Assessment uh, Scale. Those are the three routine neuropsychological tests uh, that we're using currently in our routine clinical practice. And uh, most of the memory clinics uh, currently are using these tests. Beside that, uh, I personally will address uh, the psychiatric assessment and especially the behavioral uh, symptoms uh, and psychological symptoms of dementia, in particularly depression, then uh, uh, the differentiation between uh, depression and uh, dementia, because many people with depression can be easily misdiagnosed uh, for having cognitive impairment, and that is a syndrome that we call in psychiatry pseudo-dementia. Another big challenge uh, for our all the people with memory problems are the behavioral problems. And behavioral problems usually are becoming much more prominent in the second half of the cognitive impairment. And especially in a medical setting, they can be easily misdiagnosed for other uh, medical problems. Uh, uh, confusion, for instance, it's a very, very rare on, in medical settings. And um, about uh, 30 to 40 percent even of all older people on medical uh, wards uh, will have some form of confusion. But that confusion that we see in medicine usually is associated with uh, what we call acute confusional state or delirium. And there is a big difference uh, between dementia and delirium. So I will in particularly be addressing how to differentiate uh, delirium from dementia. And this is very important uh, because uh, the clinical management is very different. People don't die from, from dementia, but people can have uh, serious consequences uh, uh, in terms uh, of uh, their um, uh, mortality rates, uh, uh, outcomes uh, in terms of 24-hour care if they have delirium. And delirium can be treated uh, because uh, the underlying pathology is one of uh, pain, infection, uh, hydration, constipation that can be easily managed uh, and uh, improved.